The main threat is the warming of the seas combined with the changing of the chemistry of the seas, which we call ocean acidification. So ocean acidification is one of the consequences of our carbon dioxide emission, and we know as a fact that it's altering the chemistry of the ocean in a very significant manner. As CO2 gets pumped into the atmosphere, very quickly some of that CO2 and around 25 or 30 percent of that CO2 gets absorbed in seawater very quickly. And with this solubilization of, of CO2, you have an, an increase in the acidity or a decrease in pH. And those effects aren't occurring in isolation. Those are also being compounded by ongoing pollution, uh, land-based sources, heavy metals, pesticides, organics, and marine plastics also by overfishing and the destruction of habitat. All of these things are combining uh, to, to increase the impact of warming seas and ocean acidification. It will impact them directly by changing their physiology, so most of the time organisms are challenged by a new stress. So they, 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 they die more, they grow slower, they, they need more food to survive and things like that. And you can also have indirect effects, so it's changing the balance between the ecosystems. The oceans are on one hand quite fragile, but on the other hand they're also very resilient. Uh, and we've seen that the oceans can recover if they are managed well. What is important is that we recognise the threats that we're putting on the oceans. and We recognise their combined effect and that we allocate resources to understanding those effects and addressing them in a proactive way. If we do that, I have great confidence that the future for the oceans is a positive one and not just for the health of the oceans, but also the economic productivity of the oceans. But we must act now, we can't delay anymore.